Thank you guys, welcome back to Fast Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and today we're going to talk about pre-meditated ejections. As you can see, I'm in F18 and what we're simulating is we've done some aerobatics. Yeah, lad, 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 lad. Like gangsters and we got carried away because we are ninjas. And in doing so, unfortunately, uh, we roll out for some arrows up the north here and we're nice in the cockpit having a look around going, oh, look at us, what heroes of the sky we are. And I look down and I see my fuel and I'm like, Hang on a second, darling. That's a thousand. I've got a bit of pain in my life right now because there's no way it looks like I'm getting back home because uh, Creech itself, if I go and have a look on my TACAM, is not even showing. So it's so far away um, that I'm not even getting it. But I know I'm really far north. Let's have a look at the map. First time I looked at the map, all sorted. Then there's nowhere I can go. I'm not going to make Tony Park. I'm not going to make Lincoln County. I'm definitely not going to make. Creech, I'm not allowed into groom, so I'm going to have to abandon the aircraft, guys. Lots of reasons you'd abandon the aircraft, and one of them, of course, if you are running out of fuel, fuel leak, anything else. We're going to put out a message into air traffic. It's going to be a mayday. We're going to speak to them. We're going to go through some cards. We're going to have an awesome time because we're fast in performance, and we are legends of the sky. Lads, 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 lads. And ladettes, of course, because we are inclusive here in this flight school, because that's what we have to be nowadays, don't we, guys? We can't do anything else. Take the pressure off you. If you can use autopilot for this, then do so. What I'm going to do is push myself down then to somewhere I know, which is Rachel's Farms, which is pretty much from me about 210, heading down here somewhere, and I'm going to speak to air traffic. All right, a dial up frequency then. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, FJP is a single Hornet out in the northern Coyote ranges. I have a, a fuel leak. It looks like I've only got 800 pounds left. I'm going to have to look at ditching North Rachel's Farms. Uh, I'm requesting people come and pick me up, please. What did FJP squawk emergency? FJP squawking 7700. I'd squawk 700 and they would fire me out and they would say, FJP, you are identified currently at 12,000 feet. Uh, north of Rachel Farms. Um, the best area we can think of putting you out is so that area to the north of Rachel. Stay north of the road that's running east-west. FJP, Roger, and I will call two minutes to ejection. FJP. FJP is my call sign, guys. So let's go through some cards then. This is a Hawk T1 card. It basically says in a two-seat aircraft, use command eject. Don't go out at the same time. The seats do come out at slight divergence to each other, but ideally you want to be getting out either individually or on a command eject system. Yours, use the autopilot, guys, if you are doing things. Auto throttle control now is in, and my AP barrow is selected. I'm also going to do attitude. This jet now will sit there in a nice circle in this area whilst I go through my checks with you guys, okay? We would warn the other occupant if we're in a twin seat aircraft, the height there we need to be between two and 9,000 feet, slightly above that, but I'm conserving fuel. There's Rachel's Farms out there. We nip down there for a cup of tea once we've dumped the jet. Airspeed, 250 knots. We will be beneath that or at 250. Squawk, 7,700. Now, we are doing that. If we're too fast, we do have problems with the effect of speed on the body. So we do not want to enter into that territory today known as Le Monde de Pain, the world of pain. High speed ejections are fun for no one. We do not want that in our lives. 250 knots is a great speed and the actual Hornet manual talks about the speed regime. The seat is cleared up to 600 knots, up to 50,000 feet and it does say ideally 250 knots is, is good for you to get out. Harness, tighten lock, leg restraints. For us, we had a personal survival pack. Make sure that was connected. Auction mask, tight. Really toggle down those bad boys. You don't want that coming off your face. Visor down. So you really want to get those visors down, guys. Let's not mess around, okay? There's going to be a lot of debris that comes out of this airplane once this canopy comes off. Now, in the Hawk, there was micro detonation cord across the very top of the aircraft canopy. That is an explosive that's going to bang into our face going to cause us enough damage we do not need that do we no we don't aircraft trim is required consider the use of aerolon trim max half aim towards selected impact area radio we will call as required we will sound like men of the sky or women of the sky of course uh, if we want to do that but we will sound mature no one's panicking in this airplane today please and throttle will be idle we do not shut the throttles down though because you may need to ditch the aircraft 540 on the field we're good if we need to so don't shut the engines down ejection positions we will assume and then the seat firing handle we will pull uh, using command eject system if possible also guys i would just talk about a positive vector that we need um, if we possibly can away from the ground we just want to be climbing as well it's also quite an important point we're just going to go around the circle one more time then in fact let's just tighten this circle up a little bit here and when we can start thinking about getting out of the aircraft and whilst i do that we'll just go through some more of the cards that might be of interest to you 
So when the ejection happens then guys, we do get this heat pop out of the aircraft. It's rocket assisted, so you will get those rocket motors burn, taking it clear of the aeroplane. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And uh, then obviously we're going to get the parachute come out the top. That's going to help us get the main chute out of the aeroplane. And that's going to release the, uh, the main chute out of the aeroplane, allowing the seat to fall away from us uh i think on the hornet was below about 18,000 feet it's on there i can't really read it it's from a distance i think the seat stays with you until about 18 on the hawk it was till about 10 and then uh we should open a full canopy above us but today we're going to aim to be below 9,000 feet make sure the rad out is selecting the hud which it is that will help us keep a good eye on where we are uh what are we doing 260 270 yeah, that's pretty good there's rachel's out there so we're happy they did say the road north south i can't see it we're probably in a good area now. That's absolutely fine. We're going to sit here. We're going to look to get out. Auto throttle control is still in. I'll take that out now. Fuel, we're looking good for 10. And then we will look to get ourselves out. On the Hornet car then, pretty much goes through the similar sort of things. Keep yourself nicely strapped in. It does say trade airspeed for altitude, cabin pressure switch. It says ramp. Uh, sorry, ram air or dump just to stop the overpressurization or the underpressurization. Sorry, once the canopy comes off, I'm assuming and shoulder harness tightly locked it also says though quite importantly make sure that we keep those knees nicely on the on the seat there we don't want to be uh breaking our femurs on ejection very important okay very important lap and shoulder harness tight visors down helmet secure oxygen mask tight altimeters check last card then we're going to have a look at it actually says these proper body positions must be taken to prevent injuries Good area for ejection there. We'll come around and we'll eject on a southerly heading so then we can just walk down to Rachel's, get a cup of tea. Got good fuel. FJP ejecting uh, 60 seconds. FJP, press head firmly against headrest. Elevate chin slightly like a boss. Press shoulders back and firmly against the seat. Hold elbows and arms firmly towards the sides. That's to reduce flail injuries. Press buttocks firmly against the seat back. Place thighs flat against the seat to stop you breaking your femurs. No one wants that. Press outside of thighs against side of seat. Place heels firmly on the deck, toes on the rudder pedals. The guys, the main thing really is to make sure that your femurs, your your thighs are right on that seat. Okay, you do not want them not to be on the seat. Throttles idle. Rolling out and heading of 180. Clear flight path ahead. Loads of time here, guys. 2,000 feet we have. Nicely bringing the stick up. We'll let the jet get back to 250 then. I am going to put in half aileron. Half of the trim now on this. Half the trim on this. Here we go. Keeping it right. I'm putting half left in. There's 250. FJP ejecting. FJP. That's nicely in. Positive vector and let's get out. FJP eject, eject, eject. Full canopy there, nice and happy, and you can see how the jet tumbled and corkscrewed itself into the area that we had cleared ahead. We were north of that road that they talked about. Everyone's happy. Guys, if you want to learn more about this, then by all means come into the flight school. It's Shadowlands, you know where it is. And if you want to know about an ejection that wasn't necessarily premeditated, then press up here on the top right hand side. There's a film I made of the MiG-23 crash at the weekend. I'll catch you soon, guys. Thanks so much. Tim Davies, Fast Ship Performance.